Water leak. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey guys, it's Dawn. Um, finally going to attempt at uh, the water heater thing. I, you know what? I was going to do something clever and, um, and I just gave up. Whoa! Oh, it is going to be clever. Oh my gosh. Actually, am clever sometimes, <laughs> but um, wow, there was a lot of water in here. I didn't really want to flood um, my whole area back here, so this looks a lot better. But um, God, I really didn't want to work on the water heater. It just this with electrical, with gas, with water. I mean. It just is too much for me. This is way above, way above um, my capability, and I don't like it, but. All right, we're gonna see what we can do, what we need to unhook in the back. But just, just some water lines and stuff. Um, I wanna get it all drained out as much as I can first. And, um, wow, it's a lot of water. Well, it's a six gallon tank. Yes. So, huh. interesting. Anyways, well, uh, <laughs> wish me luck, you guys. All right, it's coming along. Um, I don't know how heavy the six gallon aluminum water heater um, weighs. So that was kind of my worry is how much does this weigh? Am I gonna be able to handle it? I got all the screws out, I pulled it out, but it is a super tight foot for that styrofoam. Like they, <laughs> there's no wiggle room whatsoever. Um, there's the gas line. Uh, all right, so that's where we're at right now. I just have to shimmy, shimmy, shake it out. Yeah, there is no wiggle room whatsoever. A little bit on the side, so this top wire, it was sitting on top, routed it over to the side because I have a little more space on the side, but the top and bottom is getting all chewed up. The styrofoam is getting all chewed up because I have no space up here. But um, you know what? I'm just going to keep chewing it up then and uh, <laughs> see how it goes. Hey there, all right, it's out. It's laying on its side so I can take a look at the underside and um, I cannot figure out where the leak is coming from. Um, here's electrical box, here's the heating element. It's not from there because uh, there's a nice layer of dust all down here and that dust is intact. So not the heating element. Could it be these fittings? When it was leaking, I felt all around these and it seemed bone dry, but um, they do look like shit and they do have little holes in it. So uh, worth redoing maybe. Uh, this thing, you see this you see this dust pattern over here that where's my finger where is my finger there we go so that looks like a uh, fluid but um, that's where that's where this goes in right so that's where the gas goes in gas is sometimes liquid so that could have just been liquid there was a whole bunch of scale um, down at the bottom so I guess I should rinse this out but uh, I don't know how else to look for leaks and I don't know what to test for and I don't see any places that could have been leaking. So this is uh, not good, except maybe that. Why does that look like it's so loose? What is that way up there? All right, still looking for clues. Um, this is where it was sitting. You can see the watermarks around it. You can see how far the water spread. And you can see the wood is completely dry and untouched um, on the other side. So you can see the difference in the color of the wood. 
So that over there, the far side is definitely the dry and this darker wood is where all of the water was at. So it definitely came from under the heater. Yay, 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 yay. There's a little mark there. And that was where I was guessing that the majority of the leak was coming from. And that could be an older water stain indicating a longer term leak from there. I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, you guys, this has been one of the more challenging um, adventures, mysteries ever. Uh, <laughs> there was just so much wrong with this water heater, but I think it is getting very close to being fixed now. Um, so this is my hot water out and I did not have a valve here. I have a valve, the old valves are look like this. So I have this valve, I have this valve, and I did not have this valve. So I got this shark bite valve thingy and I installed this on there. Um, this is the old um, thingy and I had to install a new thingy because I finally figured out that it was this old thingy that was leaking. It was just really hard to troubleshoot because it only did it when it was full pressure and um, and after the after the initial leak I wasn't about to fill the whole thing up with water and test it right I wanted to find where the leak was coming from but even with filling up this tank with water and looking for a leak it didn't that didn't work because um, it wasn't under pressure so basically I had to I had to take this whole thing out, check the whole thing, everything looked fine, and then finally give up, put it all back in, put it all back together again, pump it all full of water and full pressure, and then the leak finally appeared. But even then, it was a little bit difficult to find the leak because the leak was not dripping from here, it was dripping from here, and then it was rolling down there. And so I kept thinking that the leak was coming from down here, but but now I know that it, it was impossible. There's nothing to leak down there. And then I finally saw the leak coming from here and then rolling down there oh so impossible and then um i so then i was like okay so i need i need a new um i need a new thingy so i got a new thingy this this uh it's a 90 degree elbow uh pex pex elbow thingy pex 90 degree elbow so i got that i took it off i took off the old one and um, I put a new one on and then I still had leaks. And then I figured out, oh, my PEX tubing is bad. And so, so you'll see this is the original PEX tubing. I went out and bought PEX, new PEX tubing. So I got new PEX tubing, I cut it, I put it on, and then I was using um, other PEX crimps. I, I was using other crimps because the PEX crimp, you need a $60 tool to do it. So, and I didn't want to spend $60 on a tool, but then I was, I was still leaking. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm okay. I'm done messing around with this. I'm going to go ahead and get the $60 tool and all of the PEX crimps. And I'm just going to do it right. I'm done with this. And sure enough, I got it all done proper. And now it is no more leaks. Um, so no more leaks on there. And then I was like, okay, great. Let's, let's get this all like done up together and let's turn it on and let's go. And then it wouldn't turn on. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> what is going on? I'm checking to see, oh my gosh, it's getting hot. Yes. So it wouldn't turn on, wouldn't turn on. So then I'm like, okay, um, over here on my control panel, I had a DSI error which has been there forever. And that just means that the propane tried to ignite, but it didn't. And now I know these switches all flip to the left means that it's on, flip to the right means that it's off. And the DSI light, oh, that one was also messed up. So I actually had to take this whole panel out, fix the light bulb inside, and now the light um, is proper. But I don't have lights for these two, which is really really confusing because right now I still don't know if my electric works for it but you know what I got my propane working so I want to show you what was going on with the propane oh by the way 
this ratcheting um, wrench thing is amazing. I love it. Recommend it. And uh, you don't need one quite that long, but that was the long one that I had. And this is a 7 8 uh, socket. And that is amazing for this thing. It uh, makes it so easy to get that on and off. And I had to do that a million times. I had to get a new replacement rubber um, bushing over there. And now I have to um, reseal and caulk it. I'm feeling the heat. And um, so to reset my DSi, I don't have an on off switch on my heater. This Atwood, um, let's see, Atwood GC6AA-10E model. Um, and this one was in 2005, I think, is the age of this one. And this is a 2006 trailer. So anyways, I don't have an on-off switch here. And I don't know how to reset the DSi fault inside the light. But I figured it out. I, <laughs> I don't know if this is the way you should do it. But what I did was I pulled this top one out. Wait a sec. Popped it back in. And then that reset everything in here. I know this is my control panel. That reset everything in there. And then at first, here's my propane. At first... I was only getting a spark and nothing else. So what it does is it tries three times and if it doesn't ignite, then it'll throw that DSi error. So then I unplug this from the module um, and then plug it back in and then I'll try again. So the first time I tried, then it, um, it sparked, spark, spark, nothing. Did that several times. So then I went to my furnace and I was, well, I was wondering if there was air in my, in my, in my pro, propane gas line because I had to take this out and mess with it. And I was turning this whole heater upside down and shaking out water and just being really abusive with it. So I was like, okay, maybe I got some air in there or something. Maybe I need a burnout. I don't know. So I turned on my furnace because they said that some, some other YouTuber said that that could be a thing. And to get air out of your gas line, you can turn on your furnace that pr pr burns propane, and you can turn on all the burners in your, on your stovetop, but I didn't do that. I just turned on my furnace because that's a really big fire. And I did that, and then with this one, then it finally would ignite, and then it would, uh, it, it would spark, then it finally ignited, but then it putter out almost immediately, like two sec, one second, two second. First it was one second, then it lasted for two seconds and puttered out. Finally, after burning the furnace some more, uh, it is finally going strong. That is a strong flame in there and it is not looking like it's gonna give up. So definitely I have propane heat going right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal this up and reseal this and put all the screws back on and put this back together because at this point whatever's wrong with electric well there might not be anything wrong with the electric i don't know i got the propane work in um so that's good and then i after well i guess i can i don't i don't know how to check the electric but anyways i'll figure out a way i'll turn off the propane i'll check the electric <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, but I think I can put everything back together because none of that is going to require pulling this whole thing out again. All right, so um, it's probably too soon to be wrapping up this thing, but I feel like I know this water heater intimately, inside and out, in so many different directions um, that that it's going to be fine. I'm not going to have to replace anything on it. Um, if I can only run it off propane, that's fine. But I'm sure the electric is going to work as well. Um, I already checked all the fuses and stuff like that. It's just that there's no like on off switch. There's no like light or anything to say that it's on. So I don't know. I don't know. But I will think about it when it is fresh, when I am fresh again to be able to think about it right now. It is. I'm just glad that I will have a way to have hot water. And about the PEX crimping tool, that $60 tool, I also figured that I'd get it um, because I am going to reroute uh, some things, some of the water lines. And so I'm gonna have to be doing more plumbing work and I'm just gonna go ahead and use, 
use the pex crimping tool i say uh yeah that's how you're supposed to do it so i am done trying to outsmart them they have a good system going there and i will use it um but thanks for joining me this has been uh, a big big learning lesson with the water heater and um what are my next things i don't know but uh Thanks for joining me, you guys. I appreciate the support and I'll talk to you later. Bye.